Chisa Lowen, and I'm going to be playing a little bit of Assassin's Creed today. a little bit better now I can hear myself all right so like I said um, my name is Tisa Lowen and I am um, here streaming today as a part of the um, Archeo gaming con 2020 year zero that is a uh, weekend long um, gaming in archaeology and gaming gaming in archaeology event happening this weekend, uh, the first weekend of August, and it is being streamed all weekend long at twitch.tv Archeo RPG, that's spelled A-R-C-H-A-E-O RPG. And you can also get more information about that using the hashtag A-R-G-A con 20. So today uh, I'm a bioarchaeologist and today I'm going to be talking uh, a little bit about <clears throat> how we might use uh, games and specific modes uh, of this particular game as an educational tool. So the game I'm playing today is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This game takes place in Greece around 500-400 BCE. The company Ubisoft does make other games uh, that are also historical. And some of these games include something called Discovery Tour. I'm going to briefly talk about Discovery Tour today because I think that's the main educational tool that people think of when they think about using these games uh, as an educational um, uh, way of teaching. So we're going to look at that really quick, and then after we look at that, we're going to talk about something else, the story creator mode. So like I said, um, I'm a bioarchaeologist. I actually uh, study uh, human skeletal remains um, uh, as a way of looking at identity, biological and social and cultural identity in the Iron Age and uh, in Croatia is where I work. Um, Croatia and the surrounding uh, modern day countries in that area of the Western Balkans. There's a lot of overlap in that region with some of the things we'll see here today. Uh, particularly because of the shared Roman influence, but also shared Greek influence as well. So I'm going to start by looking at um, the Discovery Tour. It's a great tool that, um, that you can use in a couple of different ways. First of all, it has fully voiced tours. Uh, the scripts are written by, uh, with consultation with archaeologists and historians. And what that allows you to do as the gamer is it drops you into the, the map fully opened up uh, with no enemies, so you don't have to you know, follow the game mechanics. Um, a lot of things that may usually be in the way, like debris, uh, or bad weather are not in the way and you can access different sites. Let me show you something really quick. Uh, oops. So here's our map and you can see this is our map of uh, ancient Greece. Of Crete down here. And we're right here in Athens. And I'm going to be taking us to a little cemetery 
right here outside of the city. Oh, look, there's a little cemetery right here. So a couple of things. The Discovery Tour um, has fully voiced areas where you can actually tour. Let me show you that. So you could pick, let's say, you wanted to learn about daily life, and you could go to a certain area, and it's voice acted. There's also little areas like this that will give you some information about an artifact. And so this is giving you an example of uh, Stelle here. Now this specific one is not shown here, but it gives you some specific information about what they looked like, what they were used for, and then it gives you an example in the game. And actually, just for fun, let me show you, um, there is something a little bit closer to the one that they showed us here, right over here. right there. So um, some good examples here. But what we're going to do today, so this is a really great um, resource and I recommend uh, a couple of different ways of going about this. So first of all you can you can of course have your students uh, and I'd say this is this is high school, uh, upper level high school, maybe lower level college. It depends on the content of the rest of the course. Uh, but what you can have your students do, they could buy the game. Um, unfortunately, that means that they have to have certain hardware. This game runs on, uh, requires uh, certain consoles or a high-end gaming PC. Um, and if your class is uh, appropriate for that, then that might work out. The game itself costs about the price of a uh, a cheap textbook, uh, especially since it's older, it's, you could probably get it for twenty or thirty dollars now. But another way of doing it is that you can uh, actually go through the game for your students live and stream it on Twitch, like I'm doing right now, or you can stream it. Uh, you can record it ahead of times uh, and show it to your students, or you can also stream it on YouTube. So I'm going to back out of this mode and instead show you um, another mode that you can use Uh, that's really helpful if you're trying to teach something more specific that's not covered in the game, uh, that's not covered in the discovery mode. Or uh, if you want to take your students through an area of the game or have them go through an area of the game with a little bit more detail. And that mode is called the story creator mode. It's offered for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and you access that on a uh, desktop or laptop, not on the, in the game itself. And it's basically a uh, an interface that allows you to create a, a quest or a mini story to be played within the game. So I'm actually going to read a little bit of the description from the website. Write your own stories with beloved historical and fictional characters from Assassin's Creed Odyssey and accompany them with gameplay, handwritten dialogue, and a mixture of quest objectives. Choose from a selection of familiar quest objectives to build fun and challenging stories. The story creator's interface is available only in English. So the interface is only in English, but you actually write parts of it yourself. And what it does is it shows you on the website, it gives you sort of a, 
what looks like a, um, uh, a timeline or a, a workspace that has icons on the left side that you can choose from. Hold on just a sec, let me go to my stories here. So it looks like a workflow on the website um, uh, or like a flow chart where it gives you these di little different boxes uh, so you don't need to know any coding and it's really basic and, and um, easy to use where you just pick a, a character you make you can make a character and name a character uh, and then you pick an action that you want them to do and then you connect that character to that action and create a workflow or a, a little timeline and then you cap that off with um, the quest objective. And so this quest that I've made, um, you can play as Alexios or Cassandra. I'm going to uh, change it so that the enemies are weak. Uh, let me just put invisibility on. So we're going to play this story that I created called The Bioarchaeology of Ancient Lives. And I sort of wanted to create a fun story where I um, took the player through uh, a few fun facts about burials in, um, in the Iron Age. And we're actually going to go back to that cemetery that we were at before. Uh, but we're going to follow a quest to do so. Another uh, fun way of using this particular mode, instead of writing it yourself, uh, is to also have your students write mo uh, games for each other. Because one of the great things about this is that you can share it online. So you can share it for others anywhere in the world to play. Um, but you could also have your students share it for each other to play. And if you want, you can attach um, experience and um, cash rewards, in-game currency rewards, to completing the quest. So we got a new quest here. Let's look at it. Meet the stranger. Meet, meet the strange visitor from far away. Two archaeologists are excavating on a peninsula. Help them out. Go to the excavation site and look for the archaeologist. So I'm going to track this quest. And I'm going to look around. I see the check marks over there. So I'm going to call my horse. Okay. Oops. Wrong button. Let's go. I've been playing another game that has uh, different controls, and that happens sometimes. Oops, that's... So the one downside of this mode is that Unlike the Discovery Tours, it's not voice acted, of course. So it can be a lot of text. So I just caution yeah. anyone using it um, to try to keep the text short. Because it can get a little... Um, yeah. it, it can, you can lose interest Ooh. pretty quickly. Don't ask any questions. Let's keep out of sight. Hello, traveler. I am an archaeologist. My colleague and I 
were excavating in those ruins over there, but I can't seem to find her. Will you help me? Yes, I'd be happy to. All right, so it gives us a new quest objective. Talk to the bioarchaeologist. So, whoops, I'm going to track that. Okay. So he mentioned the, the ruins over here. Let's just go check these out really quick. So we're looking around. She's not here. We're going to find her. Of course, we have the quest objective that gives it away. Um, but I like encouraging exploration because there's a lot of really interesting things to see in this game and it sort of gives you a feeling for what the landscape could have looked like and kind of gives you a different perspective. So we're going to sneak past here. I'm going to try to not aggro the NPCs. I don't think they've seen me. There's that one guy right there. So I might, let's just see if he sees me. So far, it... it doesn't look like he's going to see me, so, all right. So Cassandra says, excuse me, are you an archaeologist? Your colleague is looking for you. And she says, hello, actually, I'm a bioarchaeologist, but yes, we were just packing up the excavation for the night. But, I think this fort has been looting artifacts. Will you help me retrieve the artifacts so we can head back to camp? All right, so, I have to acquire the excavated artifact. I have a feeling that that is on one of these people here. So you can place objects on individuals and have them pass between individuals to complete quests. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna knock this person out. Alright. That person didn't have the artifact. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna have to go do a little bit of gameplay. Oh, what does this person here have? Aha! Excavated artifact acquired. All right, so so what we can do is we can look at our inventory and look in our bag and see that we have the item. Minoan artifact excavated from ruins. Okay, cool. So let's go back. It's not Cover me. I have the artifact. That was unexpected. Now what? Thanks. I have my things. Let's get back to camp and I'll introduce you to the team. We come from very far away, a dry, warm place called Phoenix. And there I study the lives and deaths of people from the past. I say thank you for helping us. Uh, I'm happy to tell you what we've learned. What do you mean the past? Like the Mycenaean culture? And where exactly is Phoenix? It's just down south and past the water a little, but not far away. Anyway, I am really here to do an academic study of the burial practices in this region. Would you like to join me? Hmm, this sounds like an interesting trip. Oh, why not? Meet me at the camp. All right, so we're going to meet her at the camp. And let's see. Oh, I totally <laughs> missed. That's embarrassing. 
that's what happens when you play games with different there we go uh, so yeah so it's a great opportunity um, to put really bad dad jokes into your lesson and um, And despite the fact that it's not voice acted, of course, if you're doing the demonstration for your students, you can voice act it yourself. You can have them voice act it if they're playing the game um, for each other and recording it or streaming it. So there's ways around that. colleagues uh, will be here working on their research and if you ever want to ask them about their work you're welcome to. In the meantime uh, let me show you this newly discovered tomb nearby. Sounds exciting. All right so we are on an escort mission you can see in the top left corner escort the researcher to the tomb so before we do that we are actually going to talk Uh, so Cassandra says, hi, what do you do here? And the zoo archaeologist says, hi. Uh, a zoo archaeologist is a person who studies human history and prehistory through the excavation of sites and the analysis of artifacts and other physical remains. And then Cassandra, uh, picking up on what she's saying, says, so you look at dead animal bones all day? And she says, yep. And then... Hi, what is it that you do here? Paleobotanist lets us know, gives us a definition of paleobotany, and uh, one way that it could be used. So we found seeds here that show people use flowers in burial ritual rituals. So you can use the characters to uh, tell the player things that have been discovered using uh, particular methods. And now we'll head up to the tomb. talk to the bioarchaeologist. So what is this? This is a tomb. We don't know who is buried here, but we can see that it's already been looted. That's a common problem. Excavation is also destructive, so it's best that we only do it when it can be conducted in an ethical manner that honors the wishes of the locals and descendants. Right now, we are just doing a survey to document what we see. And Cassandra says, I see. The bioarchaeologist explains, well, feel free to explore this area, just don't touch anything. Uh, the paintings of the women with the curly hair and the leaping bulls, those are actually Minoan frescoes from as old as 3000 to 1400 BCE. They were discovered in Crete by Sir Arthur Evans. But most people don't know that Evans had the Minoan paintings, quote, restored and um, embellished a little bit. 
Cassandra's like, what's BCE? <laughs> and the bioarchaeologist says, it's hard to explain. Anyway, meet me at Cemetery Road, northwest of Athens. I want to show you something. I'll see you there. All right. So the game, uh, the story is giving us an opportunity to look around and explore a little bit. And so she goes off to our next quest objective while we get to look in here at this tomb a little bit and talk about some of, uh, some of the art that's in here. So this room's a little plain. Uh, this must be what she was talking about when she says it looks like it's looted because it's empty. Uh, tombs like this, um, multi-person tombs particularly, uh, were common in the Bronze Age and then um, there were tombs of elites with things like furniture and stuff in them. But the more common way, uh, the more common funeral uh, burial rite was inhumation or secondary inhumation. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the game is cueing us here into the fact that there is an opening into another room here because you can hear air blowing. So we're going to, whoops, we're going to pick that up. I'm going to go into this room. And now we can see some of those frescoes that she was talking about. We can see the leaping bulls and um, some uh, Mycenaean shield. And then there's more of the paintings up there. And if we go in even further, um, we can see some more of that. And I don't want to go too far because I know that there's a snake in here. I don't want to get... Snakes are the worst. But you can see... Uh, oops! There were not traps. <laughs> That's not a thing. All right, so we've taken a look at this tomb, and now we're going to go meet the researcher. And you can see on the horizon um, that she's all the way across the water in uh, in Athens. So we're actually going to go to the map and fast travel. Oh, so another really uh, cool thing about the story mode, the story creator, is that um, so since they can be shared, they can also be accessed. So if you're not feeling particularly creative, uh, you may want to go through the ones that have already been made, and there's hundreds, maybe thousands, uh, but there's many, and some of them are more your typical um, gameplay uh, similar to what you would play in the game, probably fighting uh, or ship battles, things like that. But there are also some people make educational ones like this. So instead of running all the way there, let's call the, my horse. And you just run towards the check bar. Gates are shut. No trade can come or go, and an army of Spartans waits for its prey. Hello. 
All right, so we're here. So I apologize, my loading screens are a little slow. Um, I don't have a PS4 Pro, so <laughs> they're going to be a little slow, but I'm assuming that'll pick up um, with the Pro or with the next console. So she says, hey, come see this. Here we have a typical roadside cemetery outside of the city. And look, grave markers include stele, which are like tombstones. Poros or statues, and these and these cylinders called kionoscore. Um, I have more to share, but go talk to my colleagues first and bring me the artifacts they hand you. Okay. All right. So let's take a look around. So this is the individual we're supposed to talk to. Um, historian. Hello, so I hear you want to learn about Greek burial practices. I am Greek, though. Well, do you know about the three main parts of the ancient Greek funeral? Yes. Humor me. <laughs> Got it. Uh, tell me, friend, what do you know? Thank you. Uh, the first part of the funeral is the prothesis, or the laying out of the body. The family will wash, oil, and dress the body, and leave it on display for relatives and visitors to pay homage. Here, take this oil. And go speak with my colleague. She will tell you more. All right, so he gave us some oil. And let's speak to the colleague. She, she destroyed this floor. Uh-oh. I better take care of this really. Oh. Wow. <laughs> All right, that's amazing. Uh, I think I'm supposed to hear from you uh, what happens after the prothesis. And the epigrapher says, ah, yes. Well, at dawn, the funeral procession leaves for the cemetery. This is called the ephora. Family members will cry, beat their chests, pull their hair. They even leave pieces of their hair with the body. Finally, this is followed by interment of the body in a grave or a cremation, which may help the soul move faster to the underworld. Wow. Now, doesn't the family stay and feast with the body? Well, it depends on what point in time we are talking about, but either they feast here or at home immediately after the funeral. Interesting. Here, take this boss to the bioarchaeologist. She'll know what it's for. All right, so we received, received this amphora here. And bring it back. Hello again. So that was interesting. They gave me oil and this amphora. Amphora, why? They said you would know. Great, I'm glad you learned new things. Yes, the amphora and the oil. Take a look around the cemetery and you'll find one of my favorite interesting facts about Greek burial. Many were buried with an interesting marker, an open bottom jar or vase, like this amphora. The family was responsible for pouring oils, wine, and other li libations down into the vessel to feed the dead. 
Some even place tubes into the grave for a more direct route. Very interesting. Well, thanks for visiting. Look around and see what I've talked about. And when you're done, pass over the bridge to leave the town. All right, so now we've come to the end of the quest and we can look around a little bit and see some of those things that uh, were mentioned earlier. The stele, um, the cylindrical grave markers as well. Uh, we have some stele that are, or some statues that are shaped like amphora. But if we go over here, we actually have one, a representation of one. And something like that would have been uh, open bottomed so that you could pour the oil um, or the, the wine or the libations into the vessel and into the grave. And then in the, in the game, you can see that they've represented feasting. Uh, also, that was something that was done up until a certain point um, when the laws were changed and uh, people were had to move those sorts of uh, celebrations into the home around 300 BCE. But we can see those shared common areas here represented in the game. We don't really get a, a good representation of uh, where the cremations would have happened, perhaps on um, something like this. We, there are representations in uh, their paintings of what that looked like, the pyres look like, but we don't really get a good representation in the game. All right, so that's it. We've finished the quest, and uh, so we're back here in that area that we started at before in the Discovery Tour zone. And you can see it's just the same. And here's the bridge. So this is going to take us to complete the quest. All right. So that's it. That's the end of uh, my story uh, creator mode story, the bioarchaeology of ancient lives. Uh, I think this is a, that one was really basic, of course. I wanted to keep the text, I wanted to have a lot of movement and exploration for the, the player character, but uh, try to keep the text down uh, so it wasn't spent the whole time, they weren't spent the whole time reading. Uh, but you kind of get an idea of how that works, and I encourage you, if you own this game already, to check this out and make some educational uh, games for other people to play and post them publicly. I will probably be editing this one a little bit and then eventually uh, publishing it for others to play. And uh, that's it. So thank you. Um, for watching my stream and just to uh, remind uh, people to see the rest of the uh, gaming, the Archeo Gaming Con this weekend uh, at twitch.tv Archeo RPG, A-R-C-H-A-E-O-R-P-G and uh, you can follow it with the hashtag a-R-G-A-C-O-N-20. All right, and thank you all so much.